Alright, so in the last video we made it so that we can shoot at different things and have different things occur. In this video we're actually going to be making it so that the enemy can shoot back at us because it wouldn't be fun if the enemy couldn't. So, let's go ahead and get this done. So there's two different ways that we can go about this. One is that we can actually create this bullet, the same bullet, and make it so they can hit players as well. Or the second way that we can go about this is that we can make it so that there is a separate bullet that shot by the enemies, and that one will only hit players. And I think I'm going to go about it that way, so that there's no chance for the bullet to ever hurt, like the bullets that the player is shooting can ever hurt him, and the bullets that the enemies are shooting can't ever hurt them, even if we mess up the collisions or something. It's a little bit, just, it's a little bit messier uh, code-wise and hierarchy-wise, but it's a lot cleaner in terms of gameplay. So we're going to actually go to our scenes, and we're going to duplicate this bullet scene by just right-clicking it and hit du duplicate. We're going to instead make it enemy bullet, right? like that, and then we're going to double click on that right there. And if we go into the 2D scene view, you're going to see the same exact bullet on there. We're going to go to the art, and instead of this blue pellet looking thing, we're actually going to go down to one of these red things, right? That one looks good. Let's move the collider over by clicking off that square thingy, and then moving the collider over like so. It's going to have the same exact collision as our other one, but we're going to make it actually a little bit smaller. The reason being is that players get really, really upset if they feel like they actually dodged the, you know, so they missed this little pixel corner right here. You get mad, and it doesn't really make too much of a gameplay difference, but you don't want them, like, I don't know. It's just a really stupid reason to let somebody get upset for. So we're going to open up Transform, make sure that's all zeroed out, looking pretty good. Now, we're going to save it, and... We're going to go to the script here because it copied the script as well. And we're going to actually want to click on it and get rid of that script altogether. So let's make a new script for this. It's going to be enemy bullets. We're going to go check on all these signals that are on here. So right now we're going to go to node and we're going to see that this signal is on here. We're going to disconnect it off of there. And we're going to do on body entered. We're going to connect it to our new script. And we're going to do the same thing for the timer. We're going to disconnect this one, and we're going to connect it, the timeout, in our uh, script right there. We're going to go to our bullet, and we're going to just copy all of this, and we're going to paste it all in here. And it should be exactly the same because we didn't change any of these names up. And instead of this, we're going to name this the player, and we're going to make that Q free our player real quick. All right, so now all we have to do is actually create the bullet and it should function exactly the same as things did before. So we just need to get a direction to feed into here to set up the direction and then we should be good to go. So we're gonna go back to the main scene that we have going here. We're gonna select the enemy and we're gonna make a test shooting script basically. So let's go ahead and make something called test shooting or something like that. doesn't really matter. And we're going to make a quick var direction equals vector 2. Now these bullets we might want to go a little bit slower. So let's go back to enemy bullet and set the default speed to play like 150. So that it's, you know, about half the speed of the, uh, the player's bullets. We can change that at a later point if we decide that we don't like it at that later point. Let's go back to the script for the enemy and let's actually just set this up really fast. So we're going to use a different function called ready. Ready happens once when the scene is first ready, of course. And we want our direction to be equivalent to... And the thing is, we need to actually be... We need to actually have access to the player inside of here. So, as this is just a test script, let's actually just go ahead and do a really messy way. Let's get the parent, which will get us something, right? And we're going to say, get child... And it's going to ask us for an in index. What we need to do is zero. And we're going to get its name, actually. So we're going to just print that out to double check to see if we got the right object on here. And if this runs correctly, it should say player on there. Yeah, it did. Okay. So we got the right child by 0, because 0, 1, 2 is what I thought was true. We need to actually have his location on there. So bar player, and we'll just say player equals get parent get child. So this will give us access to the player inside of our script. And then we're going to say dir is equivalent to player.position minus position. We're going to make this all normalized. And that right there 
we'll make it so that we have his direction when we first start, but we want that to be running every single frame of the game. So we're going to be doing it physics process delta like so. And we're going to do the same thing, but when you're doing the same thing in multiple places, you want to just have a function kind of do it for you. So you're going to say get, or we can just say get there is fine. And you want to feed in a and you want to feed in something in here, right? So you're going to say some kind of variable on here. So target is a good variable. You can just name it whatever you want. And then we're going to put these uh, colon in here. And then we're going to do the same exact thing that we were doing before. So dir equals, and instead of doing the player on here, we're going to say target.position minus the position. We're going to put it all into parentheses. And we're going to write dot normalize. And now we need to make another something happen up here. So we're going to actually go get there and we're going to feed in the player's location onto this. And that will actually just run that on there. And we're actually going to want to do the same thing up here. Get there. And we're going to feed in the player into the get there. And that will set the direction in all those cases. You know what get there would be? If you're using getter, you normally return something. So let's actually call it set there. We're naming it wrong. No, that's still not right. You know what? Let's show you guys how to use a getter. Normally, you would actually return something. So instead of saying dir equals this, you're going to say return that. And then instead of that, you're going to say dir equals get dir. And you want to still feed in the player's location on there. And then you're going to say dir equals get dir. The reason why we're doing this is just to show you guys how to normally build a getter into the game. So you see on here that what it does is it returns this position to us and we're still we're just feeding it into here like this. I like to shorten it up and just write dir equals because we're using the same variable every time but as things get more complicated you don't want to do that anymore and in fact even this is pretty messy but we'll get into cleaner code later on because I don't want to confuse any more than I've already confused. If you're barely following along just hold on guys it'll get easier I swear. All right, so now we have a direction that, that is working out for us inside of here. We want to then create bullets. And as a challenge to you guys, I want to see if you guys can actually set up the variables and create the bullets yourself, because we've already done it inside of a different scene right now. Go ahead and do that now. All right, that was a little bit more of a harder challenge. You might have even tried to do it inside the physics process. You don't want to do it inside the physics process. It's too messy, it, it'll spawn bullets you know, at, at random as much as they want. So instead you want to actually add a child node to the enemy called the timer. Put that on there. Then you want to make a timeout method onto him. You want to connect it to your enemy himself. And then you'll put it on there like so. And then we're going to spawn the bullet over here on the timer timeout. Now we want to actually have a bar bullet equals preload and then we're going to make the same thing happen again. Enemy bullet.tscn like that. Perfect. So we're going to close that off. And now we have that built into our system here. We have access to it. And then we're going to want to make it happen on here. So bar b equals bullet dot inst right? And then we were going to say get parent like so, which will again get us. Yeah, I did that right get parent dot add child and we want to add b into that like that and then we want to start b's position equivalent to our position plus the direction that we are going inside of and i believe we did like times 10 uh, times 20 last time or something like that so we'll just do that and we'll actually create a variable we'll export a variable called offset and we'll set it equal to 20 to start off with and we can figure that out at a later point and we'll times that offset into there and then we're going to also want the b.dir to be equivalent to ardor i meant to say b not p apparently my brain thought that they rhymed so it just automatically typed p on the opposite side of the keyboard and that actually should do it for creating the bullets. And to be honest, we might not even need this physics process at all. We can actually just go over here and do dir equals get dir player like that. And then we can just get rid of the physics process altogether and not run that and make a little bit cleaner code happen inside of our script. So let's auto start the timer and then let's try this again. There we go. 
Now we want those bullets to last a little bit longer, so let's go back over to the timer on the bullet, and let's make that for about two seconds instead, so that it flows around for a little bit longer. Get a little bit further away from Mr. Enemy there. It's actually fairly easy to dodge right now. And if I were to duplicate the enemy inside of here to make it a little bit more, well, interesting, by just by way clicking on the enemy and pushing Control D, then we can drag over another enemy like so, and then let's make another enemy like this and do it like so. And if I do that, you'll see all these bullets firing off at us at exactly the same time, right? And that kind of makes it a little bit more boring. And they're all firing at our exact location every single time, which also makes it a little bit more boring. But at least it's working, right? So we'll make a little bit more fancy bullets inside the next video. For now, I think that'll do. Uh, we are seeing some problems with it, but it's not too big of a deal. We wanted to uh, make it so that it's a little bit more sporadic, which uh, one of those enemies are firing at us. We also want to make it so that, well, we also want to make it so that the player gets destroyed when they get shot. And what else do we want to do with that? Oh, and we want to make it so the bullets don't just fire straight at us. All right, so let's set all that up inside the next video, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Like, subscribe, comment. Bye, guys.